So there I was scouring the internet looking for some flavor inspiration when I stumbled across this Red Bull Novelty Accord. Now an Accord is actually a perfume thing, but once I looked at the six ingredients in it plus the solvent, I realized all of the ingredients in this are grass or generally recognized as safe and approved for food use. So I thought it'd be kind of an interesting thing to see if we could take a perfume and turn it into a beverage. And what we're gonna do is make the flavor concentrate, we're gonna dilute it down, and then we're gonna make a Red Bull martini. Because if you're using four or six ounces of Red Bull and pouring it into a giant martini glass, it's not a actual martini, it's a highball. But in this case, we're going to just put everything together. It'll take like 15 minutes. You know, maybe 20 minutes, but that's mostly me jabbering about stuff. Uh, there is one important thing you should know that when you do make flavors, you should age them for at least a couple days, if not a couple weeks. So I put this one together about two weeks ago, but I'm gonna show you the whole process for actually putting it together. If you're interested in working with drops, I do have a calculator and a video over on Patreon that will guide you through the process. Uh, I, I can't repeat it every video, it just gets a little bit repetitive. So I put that all into one video. It's free, you can go check it out. I don't send out emails, I only send out notices when I do new posts on Patreon. So you can sign up for the free Patreon account, link below, give you access to the video. Growing my channel does help both on Patreon and YouTube do more interesting things like this. So let me show you how to assemble the concentrate. Dilution's really easy, and then we'll make a martini out of it. So for this recipe, we're going to make 10 grams of flavor, and we're gonna dilute it to a total of 100 grams, and then we're gonna use like three to five drops in a martini, maybe a little more. Uh, it's always going to be based on your preference, but the nice thing about flavors, if you haven't watched this channel before, is that once they're too strong, they taste terrible, and they won't hurt you. They, you know, they don't burn, they don't cause any problems, they just taste not good. It's all up to you to create the flavor that works for you, but this process is quite simple, so let me show you how it's done. First, we're gonna need some droppers, and this recipe I'll have over on Patreon. I'll link to where I find things and stuff, but it's quite easy. The first thing we're gonna do is add, or turn on our skin, scale here or balance, make sure it reads zero. But we're gonna add 2.0 grams of lemon oil. Now I'm using what's called a five fold. It just means it's a little more concentrated with hopefully less terpenes in it. Uh, and that just helps out with uh, getting it into solution. Now I got 1.998, that is more than close enough. Actually 1.99 now. So that's good. Now I always use a new dropper uh, for each ingredient because they do, you don't want cross contamination. So the next ingredient is ethyl butyrate. And we're going to add 1.5 grams of ethyl butyrate. In this, the one thing that makes it work well is that it does have a lot of these uh, fairly light esters and they make it very aromatic. And that's an important thing. So in perfumery, they tend to deal with a lot of heavier compounds, but this one actually works because natural beverage method is to kind of make things that are volatile so you can smell them even at cold temperatures. And a lot of things are served on ice. You do want to use some of these lighter compounds. So that's ethyl butyrate. The next ingredient is going to be strawberry glycinate. Now I've used this before in my previous energy drink formula. And we're going to add 1.5 grams of this as well, or roughly close. You can usually get you know, 10, 20 milligrams off or 0 0.01, 0 0.02 grams off, and it's gonna come out fine but we're looking at 1.5. So we went over that, we went 1.52. That is going to be fine. Uh, it's not going to be a major factor. So again, you don't necessarily have to be perfectly accurate, but you're always gonna be, you're always gonna find you're off by like 10 to 20 milligrams. And that's just, you know, the measure of a drop. Now the next ingredient is manzanate. Now you may not have heard this one. It does have a, pineapple estery aroma, kind of sweet fruity. It's not outside of the normal ester aroma. And we're gonna add one gram of this.
Now I tend to overshoot rather than undershoot, but that's 1.005 grams. Ylang Ylang oil. Now you're gonna find a variety of these out there. You're gonna find number one, number two, number three. They're all fine to use, they're all grass, and there are, you'll find a bunch of different ones on the market. But as long as it's Ylang Ylang, it will work. I found this one to be the best one. I do have a number one and a number three. This is just kind of a complete version. So for this one, we are going to need half a gram. And this does have a lot of aroma in it. Like I can smell it just from opening the bottle. So 0.516 grams. Now the next ingredient is ethyl acetate and I have used this one in my original energy drink flavor. Uh, we are going to be needing 0.75 grams of this and ethyl acetate, uh, it's a very volatile, it's just a combination of basically acetic acid and ethanol and it's an ester and but it's very volatile. It's got a really low boiling point, it's got a kind of a fruity solvent aroma, but in a beverage, it's going to help lift things up, make things you know available to your nose. Because again, if you're serving stuff ice cold as you would with a martini, after stirring it, you're cooling everything down and lowering, lowering the vapor pressure. So what you really wanna do is kind of give something that gives it lift, makes it uh, aromatic. So ethyl acetate does do that. So 0.75. So 0 0.755, 0 0.756, somewhere in there, that's perfectly fine. And the last ingredient is triethyl acetate, and that is our solvent. Now, it's often beneficial to have a little bit of solvent in there. It just kind of brings everything together. Even though you're mixing a whole bunch of organic aroma compounds together, sometimes they don't play nicely together, especially like things with terpenes. So a little bit of a good solvent. So you can use any solvent you want, but I would recommend kind of a pure solvent. So triethyl citrate, as, uh, triacetin, plain old alcohol. You know, this is 75% or 76% alcohol. This will work great, but not everybody has access to it. Now everybody can use triacetin. There are lots of suppliers online uh, and it works really well for this. It is a really good solvent. The only problem with it is you do not want to use an excessive amount of it. It tastes terrible at above 500 parts per million. Below like, you know, 250 parts per million, it's perfectly fine. Uh, it tastes kind of sweet, but in high concentrations, it's got an unpleasant flavor. So we are going to add 0.257 grams of this. And I overshot it. But, so we're at 0 0.315, that will be fine. It just means our flavor is gonna be a little less, but in reality, you can, if you over dilute something with a solvent, you can always just add one more drop in the final stage. So basically that's it. That is your flavor concentrate and roughly 10 grams. Uh, we're just gonna dilute this because you cannot use this at high concentration. And one of the things you might be able to see is there's some droplets on the side of the, uh, the beaker. And that's because things aren't playing well. That's where triethyl citrate is going to help or your solvent. And so eventually you'll get into solution on this one that I've made. It's basically come together perfectly. Uh, so, you know, it just takes a little bit of dissolving. And the trick with that is to just put this in and spin and that will actually help get everything in. I've weighed out basically 10 grams of product. So what we need to do is dilute it down to a 10% solution. So for this, we're just going to add 90 grams of a solvent and we can do it just like this. So we tear it and I'm going to use this mixture of vodka and propylene glycol. Vodka is normally 40%. I think this is actually 45% ABV. I bought a, a stronger vodka. But I just take the 750 ml bottle of vodka, pour it into a one liter bottle, and then I add 250 ml of propylene glycol. 
that just makes its solvent power slightly better. So for this, we're just gonna add 90 grams, roughly. So now that is your flavor dilution. You can use your age stuff. You can age it in this as well, but I'm just working through the video for you. I typically like to age them as concentrates. That way I can smell them better. If you just do it all together and then want to age this, that's fine. If you want to use this directly, as we're going to do, that's fine too. You're just going to find you're going to get a more uniform flavor if you age it. And some of the haziness will go away as well. So we'll just let this spin for a couple minutes just to fully dissolve and then we'll get making our martini. So let me show you how to make a simple martini. We're gonna take our flavor concentrate. Now I've noticed that it's already started separating a bit. So you might wanna use just pure alcohol on this one or something with 76% and kind of avoid the high water content. 65% is your friend. It'll probably work a little bit better. Anytime you see something separate, just give it a good shake and you should be able to get it reasonably back into solution. So I've already calibrated my dropper, so I'm putting in four drops. And then we're just going to use simple vodka. So now we're just gonna stir, and one thing you can do is, I have these uh, pH buffer drops you've seen in a couple of videos. Uh, I do like to add a little acidity to this because you know you're not it's typically vermouth would add some acidity to it so it's a good idea you can add simple syrup if you want it slightly sweeter you can do all that i'm just testing it as a straight up martini see if we can actually taste that flavor and that should be good now we just need our strainer and our glass And there we have it. We have our basically Red Bull flavored martini or just basically flavored vodka. Let's see how it turned out. Now the flavor is mild and that can often be the case with anything that doesn't have sugar or a lot of acidity in it. The little touch of acidity does make a difference. You're definitely getting that ylang ylang um, camphor touch. That seems to be the dominant one. And it is quite cold. Though it does smell fruity, you can definitely smell it more than you can taste it. And that's usually kind of a, it's definitely got punch as a martini should. But a little bit of sweetness often brings out flavor and that's the one issue. But this is actually pleasant. It definitely is not just vodka. There is a flavor element to it. But what happens if we add like three more drops? Now definitely with three more drops, it is, uh, you can definitely smell it. You don't expect anything on your palate with vodka. You're just going, because there's no sweetness and barely any acidity in it and no bitterness. So for people who like a straight vodka martini, very little vermouth, this might actually work for them because you get that taste of you know the, the high alcohol, cold you know, flavor but in your nose, you actually get the aroma. Now, does it smell like uh, Red Bull? A little bit. Uh, it's got that sweet candy aroma. We'll double check here. So the one thing it is missing, and I was going to bring this up earlier, is ethyl maltol. Now this is really that cotton candy element that you get from Red Bull and some other energy drinks. You should probably substitute some of this in for the triethyl citrate. So you can knock off like 0.1 grams and substitute it with this. But this is how you're going to learn how to use flavors. You're going to bounce back and forth. You're going to remove some solvent, add some of this. It will increase the concentrations. And you're just going to try because as I've showed, you can do this in 15 minutes, maybe a little bit longer. But again, without all the talking, you could definitely get it down to 15 minutes. But it is missing ethyl maltol. That is going to add a touch of sweetness and definitely give it that cotton candy flavor because if we check this out, 
that's what it's missing. And there's definitely more of a, a camphor flavor in here. So doing it just as the formula does, I don't think it, it's a necessarily a great example of Red Bull. My previous formula that I published over on Patreon is a better example, but then again, it uses ethyl maltol. So it's one of those things where, you know, you're going to have to modify flavors and going forward, we're gonna do more of this with the, uh, the flavor compounds because it's kind of fun just to see what happens. Take perfumes and turn them into flavors. So that is the Red Bull Martini. Final answer is it's an okay. The flavor is decent, but the ylang ylang sticks out too much. So what I would do is take out the ylang ylang or at least reduce it and increase the ethyl maltol. So I'll make notes over on Patreon if you wanna follow along, but those are, that's my assessment. Hope you enjoyed kind of learning this. I'll be doing more of this in the future just because it's kind of fun. And uh, I do like finding perfume recipes and turning them into drinks. So we're gonna do more of that. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.